gone with the uh, Aquilas by the looks of things rather than the Blundstone today. How do you feel about the sod turning? That was good, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought um, Job handled the shovel very well. Uh, I don't think either of us have been in the garden too much, but uh, look, it's a great, great to be out here. You know, the frustrating part about the last sort of six months is we've had to train at different grounds. Um, we're at Victoria Park at the moment training, so to have our own facility uh, is just going to be exceptional. And what will actually be in this new facility? Oh, there'll be two grounds. There'll be a full training facility with gym, uh, you know, all sorts of different high-tech uh, sports science. Um, whether we put a, a chamber in for um, altitude training, that's yet to be decided. But at the moment, the exciting thing for me is actually have a ground that we can train on. Uh, that's aimed, probably been frustrating. Have you aimed James to be training here by the end of the year? We hope to be in here training on the ground by November, um, so for pre-season next year. Yeah, obviously, the buildings won't be done then, but um, certainly the grass will be ready. And just from a wind perspective, is it windy in here or a windy hill? It's pretty similar. Yeah, it's pretty similar. I think that with all the you know the bank they're going to build, the trees are going to put up, all the windbreaks they'll put up, we're pretty confident that um, you know wind in Melbourne is pretty natural. And even at Victoria Park this morning, it was pretty windy. We're pretty hopeful that um, there won't be much wind once they've built around it. What sort of squad will you take to the, for the first Snap Cup game? Will you trial a few youngsters? Yeah, we'll probably give all our recruits a, a game over in Perth. I mean, that, that first round of NAB Cup for us is still six weeks away from the start of the season. Um, we're looking at the whole NAB Cup in its entirety. So there's, there's four four weeks of games. We want to get at least two and a half to three games into the majority of our squad so that we've got a, a deep squad to play through the first six, seven rounds. How's Michael Hurley tracking at the moment? When yeah, Michael's going very well. He trained uh, with the full group yesterday. Uh, which went very well, so yeah, we're no doubts Michael is, um, is up and ready to go. And um, As with a lot of our squad, we've trained them hard at certain times and, and eased them back at different times. Long term, more importantly, when can we see him signed, sealed and delivered as a, a bomber for a few years to come? I'm sure everyone's very hopeful that Michael will sign soon, but you know that's up to Michael, his manager and the club to sort out. I don't think that he wants any pressure from us, but obviously we would love to have him uh, sign as soon as possible, But um, and I'm sure that will happen. Given the circus that's almost happened with GWS in the last few years with Tom and, and Gary, etc., you'd be keen for it not to eventuate because otherwise every time you talk like this for the rest of the year, it's going to come up? Yeah, look, I think Michael will make that decision and, and his manager will make that decision, the club will, and, and leave it in their hands. I think Ian Robson and, uh, and Michael will get together and, and get that sorted out as soon as possible. Um, another name that Essendon fans are pretty hopeful about is Scott Gumbleton. You know, he had the surgery and... It's like late last year and it sounded like it went pretty well. Can you update us on that? Yeah, the surgery started? went really well. Scott's back running. Uh, he's been running for a couple of weeks now, um, you know, and starting to move into some, some good speed. Uh, Scott, unfortunately, last year, without us knowing, had this back problem that was referring to his hamstrings and wasn't able to really get a good run at it. So we're very confident with this uh, new bout of surgery that he'll be fine um, and we'll take it slowly with him. But um, we would hope that by early in the season he'll be ready to, to play if it might be in the, the Bendigo team. But um, he wouldn't be far away from senior selection you know, some stage early in the year. And there was an item on your website, I think it was Ben Howlett, talking about the greater depth that you, and you're obviously looking to get in the midfield. Can you just update us on how that's coming along? It would have been a big focus for your pre-season. Pre Look, it has. I think we've got some. You know, we've got enough quality in midfield, enough depth now. Obviously, Joe being the captain and you know is the head of that midfield. But um, there's a lot of guys who had good pre-seasons. I think you'll look at some of the younger guys in Jake Melksham, uh, Ben himself, and, and also Travis Collier, who now got their running to an elite level. They can play for four quarters in the midfield and put on some size. Now it's about their football ability and. And we're very confident that they've got that ability to play well in the midfield. And you're going to throw Dyson in there a little bit more this year? Oh, we'll see what happens, but uh, Dyson will creep in there at times. He's still only young and you know, you, you don't want to put any pressure on, on Dyson at the moment. He's had a fantastic year last year and we just want him to, to build up slowly. Just in terms of building up size on all the players, how do you hope that it affects the way the team plays this season and what ways do you hope it you know, improves? There's no doubt the best teams in competition are very strong around the contest and we found at certain times last year that we could stay in a contest for two and a half quarters against the best sides but we weren't able to play for four quarters. Um, you know, I, don't, I think there's been a lot written about our size. I wouldn't say that we're, we've done uh, anything that any other club hasn't done. I mean, everyone's bigger and stronger and faster this time of year. We've certainly um, put on a few kilos on some of our players but that's a, a natural progression um, and maybe it's been overplayed a little bit uh, in terms of what Essendon's done. Um, you spoke about you might put an altitude chamber in this new facility and Mark Thompson has obviously been doing a hell of a lot of research with a few other people at the club. How settled are you on what you know the, sort of the, the, the facilities and the cutting edge stuff that you'll have in there? Yeah look it's still a work in progress I and mean, we've got another 12 months before that facility is actually finished so we've got currently people researching what we need um, and also what's there in the future like what, what's in now, what's the best now is not necessarily what's the best in 10 years so this facility will have the option of actually growing a lot bigger than, um, than what it is in its first iteration and we would hope that we're at the cutting edge of everything not just, um, you know, not just altitude training. 
expansive indoor facility. I think it's 80 metres long and 40 metres wide. Look, it's, it's absolutely sensational. I think there's days in Melbourne, you know, when it's very hard to get outside and train and, and days that you want your players to train at a different level. So to have an outside facility, uh, sorry, an in indoor facility would be great. But the greatest advantage we're going to have over what we've got at the moment is a proper football ground to train on. I mean, Essendon, for, in my time, has been training on a postage stamp. You haven't been able to do the proper drills you want. So I'm most excited about having an MCG-sized ground with great grass that we're confident our players can, can train on without getting hurt on. I mean, you grow up, grew up at the old Windy Hill and now have this ahead of you. Yeah, I think it's, it, you know, Herdy's touched on it. It's just um, the frustration has been not being able to have a, a home ground without, you know, a, a cricket pitch in the middle of it. And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate that we've been able to use Victoria Park, um, you know, in this pre-season. But, uh, you know, you want a base, you want to be able to train on uh, on grounds that you're familiar with and, and that you know are at a, a great standard. So um, to combine uh, not only the, the grounds but also the facilities that go with them, um, you know, I think it's certainly going to help, um, you know, attract players and, and also just get the best out of uh, athletes. Do you get a bit of a say in uh, anything in the new facility? Uh, no, I think they uh, they did uh, ask the players if we wanted a sleep, uh, sleep room or not and uh, a few of the guys were keen on that. Uh, they set a study in a library and, and that didn't really warm to the players, so I'm not sure exactly what, uh, how it's going to look, but um, you know, I think they'll look after us. Joe, after the you lost the elimination final, your coach said that this pre-season was going to be, you know, get ready, it's going to be tougher and harder than anything you've ever done. Can you just, from a player's point of view, how, that, how that's gone? Yeah, actually it's um, been the most enjoyable pre-season I've uh, been in. And, uh, I think that uh, the mental stimulation that uh, you know has been with the program, having a new fitness guy in, um, having new faces around the club, has meant that the players have really enjoyed. Uh, you know, worked hard like everyone does, but um, you know, I think that the, the way the program has been set up, it's meant that um, you maximise your time at the club and then you maximise your recovery away from the club. And um, you know, I think the guys have really appreciated that.